part four of baking, lighting with Mental Ray and Maya for your Unity environment. So we've already created the environment inside of Unity. We've exported it to Maya. We've set up all the render settings and bake settings. We've baked a simple bake. And now we're going to go through and get all of the uh, lighting settings or bake options and Maya turned up so that we get a really nice looking bake. All right, so the first thing we should do is open up the render settings. And uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on Final Gather and Ambient Occlusion. That just puts these check marks in here and here. Now for global illumination, I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to 500 and final gather accuracy. I'm going to go to 500 and on ambient occlusion, I'm going to turn this up to 256. And then on the quality tab, I'm going to turn the sampling up to two. So we have two on the quality sampling. We've got the global illumination at 500 final gather at 500 ambient occlusion. 256 so I'm gonna go ahead and close the render window and you'll notice now if I open up this window and do render current frame this is actually gonna take a little bit more time because it has a lot more work to do now with that uh, global illumination turn on I can see the light got quite a bit brighter in there it looks like uh, sunlight is shining on the wall so I might want to turn down my area lights just a little bit so I could select my area lights and turn down the color a little bit on that so that it's uh, so it's not making maybe the intensity too will go to 0.8 so that we don't have quite such uh, bright looking lights I guess on the walls so decreasing the color and the intensity wasn't helping out too much so I went ahead and decreased the size uh, via scale and that turned out to be a much uh, better result so I think that looks good and we know now that we have a nice good looking render even with the final gather and the global illumination and the ambient occlusion turned on so now we can go ahead and um, get the shadows looking better because you'll notice if I were to zoom in on the shadows they're looking pretty uh, speckled there's there's spots and uh, so what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and zoom in onto an area that has uh, quite a bit of shadows I think I think the plants probably a good one and let's go ahead and do a render right here so it's actually looking pretty good but I can see you know some of the speckles here in the shadows so it, to make that look better what you can do is go to your lights and um, I'm gonna do this one here for the purpose of uh, the tutorial and the bake time I'm just gonna modify the light the main light that's over everything and I'm gonna go to shadows and increase the shadow rays now I'm only gonna go up to 10 but you can go to 40 or even higher you could put in a hundred if you want to um, but I'm gonna do 10 and that should make the uh, the the dots and the speckles that are coming from your shadows low shadow quality increase but it's also going to make the time of your bake go up um, quite a bit so be careful with the shadow rays and all of these settings that we're doing in this part of the video because any one of them if you if you turn it up too high I guess um, then your it could take the time of your render to, to take a lot longer so if I were to select all my lights in the scene and turn the shadow rays up to 100 it's probably gonna take quite a while to do that bake uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just gonna stay with 10 and that should give us a pretty a pretty good um, picture so I've gone through all my lights I've set them up on their attributes I've set set their shadow ray count to a good number to where I don't have speckles in my scene and I've already configured um, my options in the render settings where I've turned on global illumination file gather ambient occlusion turned up the uh, turned up the settings and we're gonna go now to the texture bake 
and I'm gonna bake this up to 2048 by 2048. Now something you can try is baking it at double the resolution that you want to use. So let's say I want to use 2048. I could bake it at 4096 and then rescale my image in Photoshop down and that's actually going to give me a better, more realistic look even though I'm still staying at 2048 by 2048 on the final uh, texture in Unity. Um, so that's something I could do but uh, again for the just for the tutorial I'm gonna leave it at 2048 to make it a nice quick bake and we're doing a tiff we could increase the bits per channel if we wanted to and the number of samples I'm gonna turn up to two here and we're still baking to one map and final gather quality again I'm gonna turn that up to two and we still have the field texture seams to three and we're still going to our uh, override UV set to the light map UV so with all of those settings now set on my texture bake, I'm going to select the mesh and I'm going to go to the window, uh, lighting and shading, and we're going to go ahead and bake this light map. And hopefully this time we get something that looks pretty nice. Okay, I can see the bake is completed. So I'm going to go to window relationship editors and I'll do the UV centric this time and I'll just select light map and then I can select the texture. So with the texture applied, I can now look in Maya and I could see that everything is baked to the one texture. So with items like this picture, you could just increase their size on the light map UV so that they uh, so that they have more space on the texture so they get a better resolution. Another thing that works really well um, that I'm not going to cover in this because it's just the same process duplicated but what you can do is you can just put all of your walls take all of your walls uh, your big geometry essentially and bake those to one light map and then take all of your small details like these and bake those to a separate to a second light map and it's just the same exact process as I'm doing here um, except one uh, you would have one mesh for your geometry, for your bit, for your room, for your walls, your floors, your ceilings, and then you would have another mesh uh, for your props, for your small detailed items. Um, that way, when you finish the final bake like this, it would take two textures, and you would have uh, m the small detailed objects would would look better and have more space on the uh, texture map. So, um, but let's say this is good enough, and we've done the bake. It's uh, the lighting looks pretty smooth. There's really not any, um, you know, t the shadows look good. So now that I have the the uh, image exported, and here it is right here, I'm going to go ahead and import this um, image texture file back into my Unity project. So I'm in the project folder render data mental ray light map and I'm going to bring that TIFF into Unity and here it is the room texture bake and so what I can do is uh, go to this object and I can see that it's using 26 different materials we don't want to do that we want to use just one so let's switch over to Maya and we'll select the mesh here the room mesh and I'm just gonna go ahead and say export selection and we're going to export that to a um, FBX and then in unity let's import that FBX okay so there's my tutorial room FBX bring that into unity and then this the old FBX I'm just gonna to toggle that off and uh, we're going to bring in the new one. And I see it's too small, so I'm going to select the file. And I'm going to turn off Use File Scale and hit Apply. Um, with the scale factor of 1, that's going to fix the scale problems. We're also going to turn off Import Materials. Okay, so now that I've set the Import Options, the other option that we want to do is swap UVs and I'm going to show why let me bring the room back in and we're going to drag the texture onto it and we have the same problem that we do in Maya 
So if we go back to this and we say swap UVs, then we'll see that it go it actually goes ahead and fixes that. Now it looks pretty dark, but that's because when the, Unity is trying to calculate the lighting. So on this room texture bake material, we need to set it to um, something like on lit texture. That way, the Unity doesn't calculate any lighting at all, and it just does a flat on lit. Now the lighting looks really good, but you'll notice I'm going to turn all my lights off and uh, there are no lights in the scene at all. So this is baked lighting now that we've baked in, uh, in Mental Ray. And this setup is actually really nice because if I move my camera anyways and we could get it to a position we could see it, actually I need to move the room. Let me move, I'm just going to copy the component. The original room was at that transform. So I want my new room to be at the same transform. So here is the major benefit of doing this. This takes two set pass calls, two draw calls. There's one, I believe there's one that's for the sky. And then this is only taking, this entire room is only taking one draw call and one texture. And that's really good for mobile games, maybe mobile VR, um, because your draw call stays really low, but you actually get some good looking uh, graphics in your game. So we still have 15 batches, 7.6 tries, two set pass calls. And if we go turn this off and we turn on the original room with the lights, we'll see that it's 26 batches, 7.6 tries. Well, the tries is going to be the same. So 26 batches, 26 set pass calls. And uh, turning on the room that we have baked, we only are using two set pass calls. So that is the process of baking your lighting and mental ray for using in Unity. And of course, I could use higher resolution maps. I could still turn my bake settings up higher to get better bakes. So again, if you want to get your small detailed items look better, um, it would be a good idea to get those out onto their own UV map instead of putting everything into one. Because again, if we select this and we go to the uh, UV editor, we'll notice that for one, there's a bunch of unused space up here, so that's no good. These objects should be scaled up larger and, and then filled up into this whole space so that this whole space is being used for the small objects. Um, that would help the small objects so that they, they're higher resolution and they look better. Another thing that could be done would be to separate back into Unity when we're building this scene, separate it into two meshes, not one. And the two meshes would be composed of um, the walls and the ceilings, and that would be one mesh. And the second one would be all of your props, and then you would combine all your props into one mesh and do a separate light bake for those two separate objects. That way, um, in, you, in, in your UV map, all of these big objects, all the floors, the ceilings, and the walls, those would take up one image, and these big squares would fit nicely into that full image. And then on your second map, you would have all of these little items, and then they would be nicely arranged throughout this whole map so they have a lot more room, and then these little tiny pieces would, would be a lot bigger. And then in your scene, the details, like the little pictures here, would look a lot nicer than they do now. And if we were to do that to this scene, again, we would only be at two draw calls. Uh, well, three, I guess. But the, the whole room would only take two draw calls. It would be two meshes and two textures. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial series helps you out. If it does, remember to like and subscribe so that other people can find the video. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial series.